In the mines of Red Creek, Miner Otis continues digging after many hours because he's desperate for gold. At that moment, a total lunar eclipse takes over the sky and the mines start shaking. The whole Otis made starts glowing, and when he touches it, his hand catches on fire. Suddenly a black cloud comes out of the hole and possesses Otis as it burns a circle on his chest and makes his eyes black. A month later in Wyoming, Sheriff Roy picks up his daughter Charlotte and her fiancé Angus at the train station. Roy doesn't like Angus and thinks his daughter deserves better, but Charlotte begs him to get over it because Angus makes her feel happy and safe. The reunion is suddenly interrupted by a group of five bandits led by Zeke, who try to kidnap as many civilians as possible. Roy hides Charlotte inside the station, then he hides behind a pile of luggage to join the gunfight. Zeke appears behind him and Roy quickly shoots him first, but when he rolls under the train to get the others, a mysterious figure shoots Roy from behind. Seconds later, Roy appears in a strange office and throws up inside a bucket. The woman that welcomes him is called Hano and explains that Roy is dead and has come to heaven, but she also assures him Charlotte is fine. This office belongs to the Ripped, the Rest in Peace Department, and Hano has been given the job to be one of their agents. The Ripped is God's police force and they're in charge of hunting down Dedos, which are the souls of the dead that escape judgment and cause trouble on earth by possessing normal people. Then Hano takes Roy to the armory and while Roy is impressed by the weapon quality, he prefers to stick to his favorite gun. However Hano points out that Dedos can only be killed by Rip's holy weapons. After Roy chooses a gun, he notices a snake symbol on the floor and Hano explains that's the Ouroboros, which signifies life, death, and rebirth. Whenever a Dedos possesses a person, that symbol will appear on their chest. Hano informs Roy that his first mission is to check a weird presence that appeared in Red Creek during the eclipse and reminds him that going back to Earth will mean sticking to the case, not getting revenge for his own death. Roy accepts anyway, sealing the deal by spitting on his hand and shaking Hano's. At that moment, Roy's chest starts to burn as the Rip's logo is branded on his skin. Afterward, Hano puts Roy inside a machine that sends him back to Earth. Roy shows up inside a portable toilet and throws up in a bucket again before stepping back to dodge a bunch of bison that run by. Then he tries to step out only to be run over by one last bison that was left behind. Suddenly, a woman and two horses appear next to Roy. This is Jean, a fellow Rip that will be working with Roy on the Eclipse case. Roy prefers to work alone, but Jean reminds him orders are orders. Besides, Jean has been dead for 445 years, so she can guide Roy through his first dead day on Earth. This is still not enough to convince Roy and he rides away. Meanwhile Zeke and his gang are robbing a bank, but instead of taking the money they're kidnapping more people. Robber Slim keeps making mistakes, which annoys Zeke to no end because the five bandits are brothers, but Slim is adopted. When law enforcement arrives, a gunfight ensues, and Slim doesn't have a weapon to defend himself. Back to Roy, he returns home to see his daughter, but when he's about to call Charlotte's name through the window, Jean pulls him away. Furious, Roy begins fighting Jean and discovers he has much better reflexes than when he was alive. The fight ends in a draw when both agents draw their weapons at the same time, and Jean uses her sword to show Roy his reflection. It turns out Roy doesn't look the same anymore, to other people, he and Charlotte look like two black women. While Roy discovers he's been buried next to his wife and that coyotes got his body after he was shot, Jean explains it would be too confusing for humans to see the dead coming back, that's why the illusion protects their identities. Roy thinks being a black woman will actually make his work much harder because of racism and misogyny, so Jean points out that if God chose that illusion is because he wants Roy to learn something. They agree they'll say they're bounty hunters as a cover, and lastly she informs Roy that if he tries to talk to his loved ones, whatever he says will come out as incoherent gibberish. Their conversation is interrupted by Roy's best friend Henry, who has brought flowers for the graves. Roy pretends to be mute while Jean and Henry chat, although it's hard for him to hear how Henry has both good and bad things to say about him. Then Henry tells them about the current situation in town, Angus has been kidnapped by the bandits, and while three gang members were caught at the bank, two of them are still on the loose. Roy wants to rescue Angus so his daughter won't be alone, and ignores Jean's scolding when she reminds him this isn't his mission. On a road nearby, the three captured bandits are being taken away in a cage by the marshals, and Roy wants to get information on Angus' location from them. Roy's also confused because he shot Zeke back at the station, thus he doesn't understand why Henry said there are two bandits left. When the marshals stop the carriage to relieve themselves, Jean notices the bandits have the Ouroboros symbol on their chests, meaning this is part of the mission and she can help after all. Jean approaches the marshals asking for help because his sister got hurt, so two of the marshals follow her to where Roy is pretending to be unconscious. Both agents immediately attack and knock out the marshals before going after the ones on horses. The carriage drivers see the danger and take off, but Roy holds onto it and jumps on its roof. One of the marshals shoots him and thinks he killed him, thus when they stop to check, Roy scares one pretending to be a ghost and Jean knocks out the other. Roy tries to open the cage and fails, so Jean uses holy water on one of the bandits to make the dedo painfully pop out. The bandit transforms into a huge black monster that breaks the cage and tries to attack, but Roy immediately shoots it with his special gun. 
The second bandit surprises Roy and takes his gun, but Jean quickly kills him before grabbing the third one, who turns out to be Slim. While Jean takes Slim to be interrogated, Roy finds a bunch of posters on the ground and discovers Slim is wanted for killing him. Furious, Roy punches Slim, who obviously doesn't recognize him and swears he's being framed because he never shot anyone. Roy wants to kill him, but Jean reminds him that they need him for clues. Then Jean spurts just a drop of holy water on Slim to make him hurt before stopping the popping with her crucifix. Slim finally starts talking and explains there's a powerful Dedo named Otis who has made the bandits kidnap people all over the place and deliver them to Red Creek. He has no idea what his secret plan is, Slim just knows that the people are being imprisoned. He also explains that somehow Otis has an ripped gun. Jean and Roy decide to travel to Red Creek to investigate and they keep Slim tied to the horses. Whenever he makes a bad joke, Roy shoots him with his regular gun, which for a Dedo is just a tickle. Meanwhile a woman named Nell reports to Otis that Zeke has added more people to the group of captives, but the bandits are starting to have doubts about Otis' origin and don't believe he is who he says he is. Otis explains he escaped through a limbo fragment because the gateway grew weak during the eclipse. The humans they've captured must keep on digging because if he finishes his plan during the incoming blood moon he'll make the gateway weak forever and he'll rule the earth. Afterward, Otis goes to check on the latest captives and talks to Zeke, who still doesn't have faith in him. Otis punishes him by grabbing the Dedo inside him and shooting it with his ripped gun, now the other Dedos are scared enough to follow him without question. Some hours later, Roy and Jean arrive at Reed Creek, and they cover Slim's face so he isn't recognized because of the poster. The group is surprised to notice the town is nearly empty and the few citizens that are around look pretty sick. Mayor Julius is making them work even if they're ill and they're so concentrated on surviving that they don't even blink at the fact two black women have arrived. Then the group tries to check in at the hotel, and for some reason the mayor is the receptionist. He points at the sign that says they don't admit black people, but Roy threatens him with his gun until Julius burns the sign. This causes Jean to turn around because fire triggers her PTSD. Afterward Julius calls the maid Beverly and pretends he's super friendly towards women and black people before asking her to escort their new clients to their room. In the bedroom, Roy and Jean ask Beverly what's going on, and Beverly explains it started a month ago. They don't know what is that makes them sick, and Julius says it has to do with the water supply, but nobody believes him. The town has been empty since last night when everyone left to follow the rumors of gold found in the mines. After Beverly leaves, Roy and Jean agree Julius must know something and Jean points at the mines, thinking they'll find answers there. Speaking of the mines, all the kidnapped people working there wear masks not to die from the illness that taints the air. When a man loses consciousness, his daughter considers giving him her mask, but Angus reminds her that taking it off means death. He proves this by taking off his own, which causes his body to immediately begin shaking. Then Angus puts his mask on again and tells the lady her father just needs to rest. Back in the hotel, Julius is feeling sick too. He's starting to cough blood, so to hide it, he unlocks his desk drawer to grab a pair of scissors and cuts a piece of the curtain. Forgetting to lock his desk again, Julius rushes out of the building to see Otis and ask for a mask as a reward for all the help he's been providing. After he begs a lot, Otis accepts to give him a mask, but he also reminds him that only his workers get masks, thus Otis' men push Julius inside a carriage to tie him up. Meanwhile, Roy and Jean tie Slim to a bathtub to keep him from escaping. Slim tries to convince them they can trust him because when he was alive he was just a thief, not a murderer or anything truly evil. To prove it, he steals Roy's gun when he comes closer but also lets him take it back, pointing out he could have shot them both and didn't. Roy wonders if the real Slim could still be active inside the body, but Jean explains that's impossible and the Dedo is manipulating them. When Slim mentions the kidnapped people were delivered to the church, Roy and Jean go there, and the sight of a church in ruins makes Jean have a flashback to her previous life. The place is empty, but Roy finds a piece of clothing that belonged to Angus, confirming he must be around. Then they begin hearing screaming and the duo runs outside to find Julius inside the carriage. Julius tells them Otis has captured the whole town and taken them to the mine, he also mentions something about opening a gateway. Jean finally realizes they're digging a hole into hell, and the poisonous gas that comes from the hole is what makes people sick. When the hole is big enough all the damned souls will come out and possess every person in the world. Their conversation is interrupted by Otis' men, who start a fight. Roy and Jean try their best to defend themselves, but they're seriously outnumbered and soon overpowered. Meanwhile Beverly is also feeling sick. When she brings Julius's tea, she finds the hole in the curtain in the drawer open, revealing a special order for the printing press. Shocked, Beverly goes to Roy's room and frees Slim, showing him that he was indeed framed and Julius paid off the press people to fake the posters. At that moment Beverly begins coughing blood, and Slim, thanks her for his freedom by getting her a mask. He also shows her the secret mask stash in the church to share with everyone before leaving to help the ripped. In the mines, Roy and Jean are put inside a cell after they take away their weapons. Nell recognizes Jean from the old times, and Jean explains to Roy that Nell used to be an ripped agent too, but she went rogue. This explains why Otis has an ripped gun. At that moment, a guard brings Angus to the cell, but Angus tries to fight the man off. 
More guards come and quickly overpower him, but Roy is still impressed and admits he had been wrong about Angus. Pretending to be a sweet woman, Roy gets Angus to talk about his marriage and explains fathers sometimes feel their daughter's boyfriends are trying to replace them, or they're afraid to be left alone. Angus assures him that was never his intention and that he always respected Roy. Touched by the words, Roy gifts Angus a picture of Charlotte that he always carried with him. At midnight, the gateway finally starts breaking, and Otis orders Nell to bring all the prisoners to start the ritual. The guards take everyone from the cells except for Roy and Jean, and Nell and Otis come to tease them for their failure. Otis reveals they'll be thrown in the pit last before the abyss closes, and Nell calls Jean Joan Dark before leaving. Roy finally realizes Jean is the famous historical figure and understands why she's so afraid of fire, he's also proud that if he had to work with someone, it was her. Otis makes the prisoners finish digging and the gateway to hell finally opens, causing damned souls to start escaping and possessing everyone they can reach to make them deados. Angus dodges them for as long as he can and helps people run away from the mines. Back to Jean, she explains to Roy that to close the gate first they must extinguish the hellfire. When she was alive, she found a vial with the tears of Christ, meaning they can use that if they manage to escape. At that moment, Slim shows up and the guards let him take Roy's gun since Slim is supposed to be one of them. However he's actually pretending and uses the gun to kill one of the guards. The other starts fighting him and accidentally drops Jean's sword, so she reaches through the bars to grab it and kill the guard. Then Slim shows Roy the proof that he was framed and asks Jean for a retrial for his soul, because he doesn't think he deserves hell. The agents accept to trust him and Slim frees them, now they have to make a plan. Jean wants Roy to throw the tears into the gateway because she can't go anywhere near fire since her death, but Roy refuses because the tears chose her. After leaving the tears with Jean, Roy and Slim go to the mines by pretending Slim is keeping Roy prisoner. When they see Otis, Roy tries to shoot him, but the damned souls protect him as a shield. Then the duo begins shooting the deados, and Roy asks Slim to help Angus and the other remaining humans to evacuate while he fights. Jean also joins the fight and kills a deado right before it attacks Julius. Another enemy jumps on Roy and makes him roll towards the gateway, holding him against the edge. Jean sees the fire and begins having flashbacks of her death, but her need to protect people is stronger and she jumps over the gateway to drop the tears into the hole and kill the deado that is holding Roy. The gateway immediately begins closing and sucking all the damned souls back inside, including Nell. Roy and Jean hold onto her sword not to be absorbed too, while Slim and the humans grab onto the cell bars. The agents think it's all over, but at that moment Otis shows up and transforms into his real form, it turns out he's Azeroth, the right hand of the devil, that's why he's so powerful. He immediately hits Roy and Jean with his powers, causing Jean to drop the tears. The duo attacks Azeroth with their holy weapons, but not even those are enough to hurt him, and Azeroth easily captures them. Jean uses her crucifix to make him drop them, and while Azeroth is distracted attacking her, Roy finds the tears vile on the ground. Wasting no time, he puts the tears in his weapon and shoots Azeroth, finally killing him for good. The sun is out by the time everyone returns to town and reunites with their loved ones. Slim finds Julius hiding and makes him confess the truth, Julius ran away when Otis came to town, and when he came across the bandits, he thought they were looking for him. Wanting to protect himself, Julius shot Roy thinking he was part of the gang, then Zeke took him away. Roy's bullet never did anything to Zeke because he had been a deado from the start. Roy decides this town needs a new sheriff to keep an eye on things, and Beverly chooses Slim for the job if she can be the deputy. When Roy approves, Beverly takes Julius to jail. Then Roy and Jean accept to leave Slim here until the time for his retrial comes since he proved himself to be trustworthy. Afterward, Roy and Jean go to Charlotte and Angus' wedding. Roy knows he can't talk to Charlotte, but for some reason now he speaks gibberish to Angus as well. Jean wishes them the best and Roy hugs Charlotte, making her feel as if she had known that woman her whole life. When they leave town, Jean explains that since Roy now approves of Angus, he's become a loved one too, that's why his speech was gibberish. Then the duo returns to the portable toilet to go back to the ripped office. Roy says the mission was fun but he's ready for his soul to move on to the afterlife, which makes Jean laugh. It turns out that agents must serve for 100 years before they get the option to move on. Frustrated but also willing to keep working with Jean, Roy steps into the portable toilet, only to be hit by a bison again. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.